Where are the other people? We will see anyway. So let's go on. Today, what we are going to do is we want to see uh, how a logical redu uh, deduction uh, question looks like. Uh, so first thing is that uh, read this question. Let us look at an example. Please read this question. And uh, I will come back and discuss the answer. Okay. So this is a question. Start from here. Earthquakes, volcanic eruption, and unusual weather. Start from there. Read the question carefully. Try to answer it. Then we will use this specimen to see what kind of questions you will be in. A, you will be getting in logical deduction. Please read the question. I think that will make it more readable. <laughs> yes, are you able to? Uh, there's a lot of English there. Are you able to read it? And can you think of an answer? Okay, Shreya has answered. Okay, let's see. She has given some answer. Is Vishnu Priya awake? I want her to answer. Vishnu Priya. Is she aware? Is she awake? Okay, Ashraya has given an answer. Now let's try to see how to answer this question and uh, thereby we will form the basis for answering all questions in logical deduction. Okay, first thing is always logical deduction question consists of three parts. One is a small passage or a set of sentences, then a question and then options. So what we should do is always look at the option first or always look at the question first not the option always look at the question first because if you read the question first you will know what to search for in the passage given so here the question says the conclusion drawn above is most seriously weakened if which of the following is true so what are we going to do we are going to search for a conclusion in the paragraph so first our job is to search for a conclusion and then we will have to see what can weaken the conclusion so let us read this passage now what does the passage say earthquakes volcanic eruption and unusual weather have caused many more natural disasters adversely affecting people in the past decade than in previous decades all right we can conclude that 
we are very fortunate because explicitly he is given the conclusion. In certain passages, he may not tell us the conclusion. We'll have to derive the conclusion. Here in this particular case, he's given us the conclusion. We can conclude that the planet Earth as a natural environment has become more inhospitable and dangerous and we should employ the weather, etc., etc., etc. So, he's saying the conclusion is that Earth as a natural environment has become more inhospitable and dangerous. So the conclusion is earth has become more dangerous. Simple. In one simple sentence, if you want, the conclusion is earth has become more dangerous. How is he arriving at this conclusion? He says more people are getting affected in the past decade than in the previous decades. His time frame reference is past decade compared to previous decades. So past in comparison with the previous decades, in the past decades, more people are getting affected because of natural calamities, natural disasters. Therefore, the earth has become more dangerous. That's all. So now we have to find a particular sentence which can weaken this particular conclusion. So the conclusion is based on the fact that more people are getting affected. So if I show that more people are getting affected by some other reason, not because of the earth becoming more dangerous, then it will become weakened. So we will see which of the options give, gives us that kind of a conclusion. Let's see. First one, the weather and earth sciences have proved better early warning systems for natural disasters in the past decade than in previous decades. Is this relevant to our uh, conclusion? It is nowhere relevant. He says they have provided early warning systems. In fact, if you have early warning systems, you should have um, less people getting affected. So that is not the case. But anyway, it is not relevant to our main so don't bother about one second international relief efforts for victims of natural disasters have been better organized in the past decade than in previous decades so when does relief happen relief happens after the natural disasters have struck so as far as our main argument is concerned this is also not relevant because relief efforts happen after the people are affected so we are not even going uh, we are not examining this post facto. We are talking about people getting affected and therefore Earth has become more dangerous. So as far as our argument is concerned, second is also not very relevant. Let's look at the third one. The third one says, there are records of major earthquake, eruptions, droughts, landslides, floods, occurring in the distant past as in the recent past. It is a decent option. You can consider this option seriously, except that he is talking about distant past as well as in recent past. We do not know what he means by decent, distant past. We do not know what he means by recent past. Distant past could be one year back. Recent past could be last month. Whereas in the paragraph given, we are very clear about the time frame. Past decade previous decades. So he's talking about 10 year intervals. So this distant past as well as recent past are uh, time frames which are a little ambiguous and therefore this cannot be considered seriously. Let us look at the fourth one. What does the fourth one say? Fourth one says population pressures and poverty have forced increasing numbers of people to live in areas prone to natural disasters. Now let's look at this a little more seriously. What's he saying? Earth has not become more dangerous. It is just that more people are living in areas which are prone to natural disasters now. And because more people are living in areas which are prone to natural disasters, as a natural corollary, more people are getting affected. It is not that the earth has become more dangerous now. It is just that more people are getting into areas, are staying in areas which are struck by natural disasters and therefore we are finding it not become more dangerous. It is just that more people are staying in those areas where 
uh, the natural disasters are, and therefore we are finding more people getting affected. Therefore, you see the fourth sentence weakens the conclusion has been provided. What is the become more like more dangerous? Has become more dangerous because more people are getting affected. Now, fourth statement, fourth option gives us a reason as to why more people are getting affected. Not not that Earth has become uh, more uh, more dangerous. It, Earth has remained the same. It is just that more people are staying in areas which are prone to natural disasters, and that is why more people are getting affected. So, therefore, option fourth weakens the conclusion that is provided. So why I have given this particular uh, example is to look at the logical deduction question and to see how we can tackle these kind of questions. So to summarize, logical deduction questions contain three parts. Part one is a paragraph or a set of sentences. Part two is the actual question. And part three is the options. So how do you tackle this question type? You should look at the question first, then look at the paragraph of the sentences given, and then try to answer uh, the, uh, the options. So this is a technique that we will be using as far as the logical deduction questions are concerned. Uh, Kaushik asks, will they give lengthier questions? But as far as Bitsat is concerned, there is no particular uh, uh, what would I say, uh, a, a form, a format in which the questions appear. The database, they keep adding all kinds of questions. So they will give lengthier questions. Reading comprehension is a lengthy question. Don't you find a uh, reading comprehension lengthy questions? So also uh, in logical deduction also, we may uh, come across or we will certainly come across uh, lengthy questions. So you need to take a call in uh, when you, when you, approach a lengthy question, whether you should answer it at that point of time or you should defer it. But point is, the questions are very simple. If you read the question properly, it, it becomes more or less like a reading comprehension question with a little bit of logic. Now let's try to do this exercise. Let's try to answer this question. Uh, please try to answer this question and we will see. The question is very easy. You just have a question and it's more like a reading comprehension question. Please answer this. Yes, Shreya has answered it. Fantastic. Very good. Shreya has answered the question. Shreya has answered the question. Where are the others? Sai Lakshmi Priya is not there today. She has given up on Bitsat or what? Kaushik has answered the question. But let's try to look at the uh, that Kaushik has given. Bhagirath, what about you? What about Rishita? What about Nalini? Who is Nalini? What about Vishnu Priya? What about the other silent types? Sindhura, Anaga, where are you? Please answer this question. It's an easy question actually. It's not a very difficult question. Are you able to read it in the first place? Please answer. Just try. Uh, you you don't you don't lose anything. Ruchita, you got to answer this question, please. You don't lose anything. Yes, Ruchita has answered. Fantastic. Kiran Mai, we are waiting for your answer. Shreya has answered. Shreya Reddy has answered. Bhagirath has answered. Rishita has answered. Kiranmai has answered. Very nice, all of you. 
good attempt okay now let's try to look at this question what is the question the question is what is the main idea simple we've already discussed this in reading comprehension earlier when you're looking at main idea questions there are a couple of things that you should do you should find out who's uh, who's the hero of the passage second is what is being said about the hero i also said while we're discussing reading comprehension i also said if you're lucky you, you may get a topic sentence and topic sentences will give you a clue as far as what the main idea is concerned uh, as concerned is so if you see fortunately here there's a topic sentence in the paragraph in the first part itself what does it say there is a strong relation between limited education and low income you don't even have to go anything for any further your answer is here there there is a strong relation between limited education and low income now tell me what is the answer now everybody tell me what is the answer now what is the answer kiran bhai what is the answer bagirath what is the answer anaga yes you got it what is the answer now shreya reddy what is the answer okay yes ruchita you got it right shreya reddy it is given amma it is given straight away there that there is a strong relation between limited education and low income what does that mean it means if a person is less educated his income is also going to be less straight away is given there is a strong relation all right you don't even have to look further the rest of the paragraph it just describes this statistics show that unemployment rates are the highest among those adults who attend school the fewest years that also says the says the same thing okay most jobs in modern industrial society require technical or advanced training so if you don't have the that kind of training you will not get a job the best pay goes with job that demand thinking and decisions based on knowledge a few people manage to overcome their limited education by personality or a lucky break however however studies of lifetime earning show that average high school graduate earns more than the average high school dropout who in turn earns more than more than the average adult who has not finished 8th grade so all the statements point out to the fact that if you are less educated your income is also going to be low therefore i mean a straightforward thing i mean there's no there's nothing uh, ambiguous about this particular thing less educated a person is less is his income and also if you see there is that topic sentence which gives a clear clear clue as far as your answer is concerned you can't go wrong in these find in these kind of questions so this is the first question now let's look at a second kind of a question in logical deduction now let's see how you will answer this please answer this question if all the above statements are true which of the following must also be true let's try to answer this question please try it let's see how you will try it Mm-hmm. Shreya has given some answer. Let us see. Shreya has given some answer. Ruchita has given some answer. Ruchita has given some answer. Let us see how to do these kind of questions. Kaushik has given an answer. Okay. Let's employ some very simple techniques to answer this question. What he is saying is, and please concentrate, everybody. Please concentrate on the board. some poets are creative so let's try to represent this relationship some poets are creative so this is poets this is set of people who are creative this set of poets set of people who are creative can i represent like this some poets are creative do you all agree some poets are creative i can i can always represent like this good now all creative persons are eccentric all creative persons are eccentric 
So how am I going to draw that like this? Okay, so this is E. E means set of eccentric people. All creative persons are eccentric. So eccentric is a bigger circle and creative people will be part of it. So this is how I can represent it. Next he says, all poets enjoy music. All poets enjoy music. So people who enjoy music, I can draw like this. Enjoy music. EM means enjoy music. People who enjoy music, I can represent this way. Now let us try to answer the question. He says, first option is, no poet is eccentric. Is that true? Cannot be true because there are certain poets here who are eccentric. There are some poets here who are eccentric. So you can't say A is right. So there are some poets who are eccentric. Okay. So that is not true. So let me take this out. Okay. Now let me come back. Let me look at, uh, let me look at B. All those who enjoy music are eccentric. All those who enjoy music is it. All of them are they eccentric? No. Why? Because only some of them, only some of them, only these people are eccentric, not all of them. So second statement is also not true. A is not true. B is not true. Are you following why? B is not true. All those people who enjoy music is this bigger circle. All those people who are eccentric is this circle. So these two, the, uh, the people who enjoy music is not part of the circle which represents people who are eccentric and therefore we cannot say all those who enjoy music are eccentric. That is not possible. Now let's look at C. Some of those people who enjoy music are eccentric. That I can definitely say because there is this set of people who are en who enjoy music and who are also eccentric. So this part, this part is fine. So some of those who enjoy music are eccentric and therefore answer is C. And most of you have got it right. That is a very good thing. So whenever you have these questions, all you need to do is draw these Venn diagrams. You draw these Venn diagrams, you will know how to represent the sets. There is one more question, slightly more complicated question than this. We will, uh, we will apply the same technique in terms of answering the question uh, when we approach that particular question. And I hope all of you have understood this. Now let's go on to the next kind of logical deduction question. Okay. Let's look at uh, this question. Please try to answer this. Please try to answer this question. Okay, she has answered this question. Okay, not a very difficult question. You just have to read the first paragraph only. All right, because the question pertains to the first paragraph. That is why I keep saying, read the question first. Read the question first. Only Shreya has answered. What about the rest? 
Anaga has answered. Anaga, we are dealing with only the first paragraph. Rishita has answered. Very good. Very good, Rishita. Who else? Harshit is not, is very silent today. Kiran Mai, yes. Good. Good, Kiran Mai. What about Harshit? Okay, let's see. Let's see the question and let's try to answer this. Okay, the best conclusion, the question is this. The best conclusion that can be drawn from the first paragraph is that after an election. So we'll have to concentrate on, on the situation after election. So the candidate who wants to be elected plays close attention to statements and actions that will make the voters see him favorably. In ancient Rome, candidates wore pure white togas, like in, like in India. In India also people wear khadar, you know, to indicate that they were pure, clean, and above any dirty work. However, okay, now this however is very interesting. That means that there is some conditionality attached to it, and whatever comes after however, you need to concentrate on it. So however, it is interesting to note that such a toga was not worn after election. So very simple, I think even Roman times, politicians were not different. So before the elections, they were bothered about impressing the voters. And after the election, they won't care about what the voters think. Okay, so it is interesting to note that such a toga was not worn after election. Why was it worn before the election? Because they wanted to indicate that they were pure, clean and above any dirty work. So after election, these things are not important. So therefore they don't wear. So what is the answer? Therefore, the best conclusion that can be drawn from the first paragraph is that after election, all candidates, now this is a sweeping generalization not supported. A, all candidates are dishonest. That is not uh, implied by the paragraph. Candidates are less concerned with symbols of integrity after elections. That is why, see, why are they wearing before the elections? They are wearing before the elections because they want to show that uh, they are pure, clean, and uh, honest. What is integrity? Integrity means honesty. Please understand. Integrity means honesty. So they want to indicate that. That is why they were wearing before the elections. But after the elections, after the purpose is served, now they are not bothered about it. And that is why they don't wear the togas. So on the basis of the first paragraph, we can conclude that candidates are less concerned with symbols of integrity after elections. Okay, let us go on. That's a very easy question. You can't go wrong there. Let's go to the fourth one. Please answer the fourth one now. Are you able to see the fourth one? Please answer the fourth one. Everybody has to participate. You can, you can learn only by participating. So don't expect any um, pearls of wisdom from me. It is by participation that you will learn. This is not some geography or sociology or public administration that I give you a lengthy bhashan and you get something. You learn by participating. You participate, you learn. You don't participate, you don't learn. As simple as that. Okay, it can be inferred that most candidates from the same political party today are likely to, Harshit has answered, uh -huh. okay, Bhagirath has answered, okay. See, one thing in logical deduction, you got to be careful is, the kind of conclusions that you draw have to be, yes, Shaya, I've, I've seen, I've seen you answered, yes. You answered, I know. So the conclusion that you draw must be supported completely by the statements given in the paragraph. Now, uh, I will, uh, to demonstrate uh, this particular aspect, let me give you one example. Please listen to the example that I am stating right now. Everybody concentrate on what I am saying. It is not on the Screen, please concentrate on what I'm saying. 
three friends have come out of a railway station in a strange town and they saw a red car going by they saw a red car going by when they came out of the station in a strange town the first friend said all cars in this town are red can we conclude this is this statement made by the first friend all cars in this town are red is can can it be supported on the basis of whatever they have seen that is what the first friend says and shreya says yes no sir correct what shreya says is right you have seen one car and on that basis you cannot conclude that all cars in this town are red then the second friend says some cars in this town are red he says some cars in this town are red can we say that this statement is correct rujita says yes shreya says no all right good so we have some interesting uh, answers here rujita says yes and shreya says no and let's examine this he says some cars in this town are red now what has he done he has used a plural there he said some cars what is the example they have one car but what is he trying to do he is generalizing what he is seen okay so the third friend perhaps who is uh, clear about his uh, logical deduction capability has come up with the statement and that statement is there is at least one car in this town which is red there is at least one car in this town which is red so which is the most logically consistent answer obviously that third one obviously the third one so this is what we have to be careful about while answering logical deduction questions you should always be careful about what you can infer and don't go for sweeping generalization yes richita in, in in the example that i gave okay so whatever conclusion that you come up with should be supported totally in the passage now let us look at this uh question uh it can be inferred that most candidates from the same political party today are likely to what let's see the second paragraph in modern history i am reading this in modern history candidates have allied themselves with political parties once a voter knows and favors the views of a certain political party he may vote for anyone with that party's label nevertheless division of opinion develop so that today there is wide range of candidate views in any party there is a wide range of candidate views so it is not necessary that the candidates in a political party all agree to one particular view point they may agree on some points they may not agree on some other points some may agree on some points some may disagree on those points so if you see a says have the same views this is a generalization not supported in the passage so this can't be the answer yes ruchita now you see now you got the answer your thinking is correct is on the right track now be different in every view every view is that right no it is not right he says they agree on some they disagree on some agree on almost all points that is also not true he is saying that they agree on almost all points no so what all that can be supported is agree on some points and disagree on others so logical deduction is all about concluding with precision that is what you should do like what we have done in today's paragraph let us go on to the fifth question this is another type of a question where we are trying to find out an error we are trying to identify an error so please read this question and try to answer this please read this question
In fact, by answering this question, we will identify two common errors, two common logical errors that people make. Both are important. The question concentrates only on one error, but we'll identify two errors. Shreya has answered. Okay, Shreya, let's consider that. Okay, Shreya, that's right. Actually, that's what I was saying, that there are two errors in this. And this particular question concentrates only on one error. So we'll have to see what is he bothered about. But let us identify both the errors. And you've identified both the errors. That's right. Rishita has answered. Rishita has answered. Okay, let us see Rishita. Anaga has answered. Oh, <laughs> Anaga has answered. Okay, Anaga. Okay, that's an error, all right. But we need to concentrate whether, we need to focus on whether that is what he is looking at, whether. Lakshman is concentrating on that. The error is all right. Anaga, the error that you have pointed is all right. But we need to check up whether Lakshman is focusing on that. Okay. What about Kaushik? What about Bhagirath? Harshit, where are you people? Please try. See, because after I give the answer, it looks simple. First, you have to try. Then you will find out uh, how to make logical deductions. Yes, let's see. Any other answers? Kiran Mai has gone to sleep. Ruchita, answer. Try it. Uh, you don't lose anything by trying. Just try it. It's not very difficult. Just try it. Just try, madam. Yes, Ruchita. You got an answer. Good. So let's see. Now, what is the question? The question is, which of the following best describes the weak point in Ram's claim on which Lakshman's response focuses? So, what is Ram claim? First, let's understand what's Ram's claim. And second is, we will identify what is the weak point in Ram's claim. And then we will go to Lakshman's response. The profitability of BML restored to private ownership five years ago is clear evidence that business will always fare better under private than under public ownership. So what can we understand from this sentence? That BML was first a public company. Public company means owned by the government. Then five years back, it has become a private company and uh, it is now profitable. So he says, he concludes on this basis, he concludes on this basis that businesses will always fare better under private than under public ownerships. Okay, so there are two problems with this kind of a logical argument. Please concentrate, everybody, please concentrate on this. Very important. There are two errors in this particular statement. First error, most of you identified. What is the error? That he has taken one particular example. And he has generalized on that best, on that example. You know that in maths, to prove a particular statement, you have to consider all cases. That is what that is how you prove your theorems. In maths, you know that. To prove a particular statement, 
you have to consider all cases. But to disprove that, one case is sufficient. To disprove a particular statement, one case is sufficient. But to prove, you have to consider all cases. Now, in this particular case, Ram has taken only one example, BML. And on that basis, he is trying to conclude. So this is flaw number one. This kind of an error in logic theory is called generalizing an analogy. Generalizing an analogy. Analogy is an example. So generalizing an example. So he's taken one particular case and he's generalizing on that basis. So that is one error. But is that the only error that is there in this argument? There is one more error. That error is he is confusing correlation with causality. Now let me let me explain that. He's saying that this has happened before. It has become private before uh, five years, and therefore it has become profitable. Who knows? There may be other reasons because of which it has become profitable. May not be because of this privatization. So just because an event has occurred before this, that event cannot actually uh, uh, result in this kind of a situation. Just because an incident happened before doesn't mean that that event has actually led to this, this particular situation. Okay, like, what, now let's look at Lakshman. Now what does Lakshman say? Lakshman says, a close look at the records show that BML has been profitable since the appointment of a first class manager, which happened while BMS was still in the public sector. So the actual reason is something else. The actual reason is that this, that this manager has come in and has changed the whole uh, operations of this company and that has happened when it was still in the public sector. So to conclude that private sector privatization leads to profitability is wrong. So Lakshman is not concentrating on the first error. Lakshman is concentrating on the second error. And what is the second error? The second error is given here. Ram's statement uh, leaves open the possibility that, he, that the cause he cites came after the effect he attributes to it. Uh, the cause he cites came after the effect he attributes to it. Uh, so therefore, just because an event has happened before a particular uh, result, it is not necessary that that event causes this particular result. So answer is this, Shreya has got it right. A uh, lot of you have identified A. A is also an error. A is also an error. I agree with you. A is also an error. But Lakshman is not concentrating on A. Lakshman is actually concentrating on C. And therefore, the answer is C and not A. All right. So let us see if we have more examples of this kind. We will become more comfortable with this kind of questions. Right. This is a very simple question and I want a very fast answer. Rapid fire answer. Please answer this quickly. Please answer this quickly. Rapid fire. Shay has answered. Okay, but you have to look at your answer. Ruchita has also answered. Ruchita has also answered. Let us see if that is right. Ruchita has answered, Shreya has answered. There are others. Why are they not answering? You have to participate. There is no right or wrong answer. 
You will learn only by participating. Please give the answers. Don't sleep. Please give the answers. Rishita has answered. Okay, very good. T. Rishita has answered. Anaga has answered. Wow, Anaga. You got it right. Anaga has answered. Very nice. Bhagirath has answered. Okay. Bhagirath has answered. Okay, let's see. Who else? Ashreya has answered. Okay, Ashreya. Congrats. That's the right answer. That's good. That's the right answer. Okay, now let's see. What is the question? The question is, which of the following is a basic assumption underlying Truman's statement? Kiranvai has answered. Very good. Got the right answer. Um, in his first message to Congress, Truman said, the responsibility of the United States is to serve and not dominate the world. Okay, we want to serve. We do not want to dominate the world. Okay. Now, a lot of you have given B as the answer. A lot of you have given B as the answer. What is B? B is actually a restatement of Truman's statement. It's a restatement. Truman said the responsibility of the United States is to serve and not dominate the world. What is B? The United States chooses to serve rather than dominate the world. Is it an assumption? It is not an assumption. It is a restatement of the given statement. Assumption is you made a conclusion. All right. You made a conclusion. Anything which comes before the conclusion, which supports the conclusion and not stated explicitly is an assumption. Assumption is a set of statements which have to come before the conclusion to support the conclusion and which are not stated explicitly. It is not given explicitly, but unless you make that statement, you can't make the conclusion. That is an assumption. So assumption is a statement which is required to make a conclusion, but which is not stated in the paragraph. That is an assumption. So on that basis, if you see, Truman is saying, I don't want to dominate the world. But how do you know that he can dominate the world? He's assuming that he can dominate the world. So assumption there is, United States can dominate the world. If that assumption is right, then what Truman says can be concluded. Truman says, we will, we will serve and not dominate. So first is, can you dominate? So that is the point. So he is assumed that they can dominate. Only then you can come up with this kind of a statement. And therefore, the answer is the United States is capable of dominating the world. Some of you, Ruchita also got it right. Uh, you've got the answer. A, B is not an assumption. B is a restatement of Truman's statement. I, I hope you've understood that. B is a restatement of the statement given. It is not an assumption. All right. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on to seventh one. Seventh one is a very important one. Very important in logical deduction questions. Please try to read it and try to answer it and concentrate on this. Kaushik, these are short, short questions. You should be in a position to answer. These questions are not long. In fact, you will get longer questions in Bitset. These are very short questions. Anaga has answered. Anaga, you are very fast to answer, but just check whether that is the answer. <laughs> May not be the answer. Let's see who else has very clear thinking. Please answer. Rishita has answered. T. Rishita has answered. Okay. But Rishita, let us wait and discuss this. This is a very important question. Eshreya has answered. Oh my God. Bhagirath has answered. Okay. Let's see. Bhagirath has answered. 
Anaga has answered, has changed her answer. Has changed the answer. <laughs> okay, not. Let's see. Anaga has changed the answer. Okay, let's see others. Kiran Mai, Ruchita. Let's see if they can answer. Okay, we don't have too much time. Let's try to answer this question. Yes, Ruchita has answered. My God, Ruchita, you got it right. Fantastic. You got it right. Okay. Now, if the statement above is true, which of the following must be true? So we need to consider. Shreshta, after a long time, you've woken up and you've come up with the right answer. Congratulations. Okay. Which of the following must be true? Um, every member of the Bombay cricket team in the Ranji Trophy who wears wristbands when batting wears either red wristbands or white wristbands. Let's try to put this correctly on paper. He says, if you wear wristbands, then you either wear red wristbands or white wristbands. Let me put it here. Wristbands. If you wear wristbands, it implies it implies either red wristbands or white wristbands. This is R. You know this. This is R. That is R. Right wristbands or uh, red wristbands or white wristbands. Okay. So this statement is of the type A implies B. This is an implication statement. A implies B. This is called an impl implication statement. So when A implies B, what it means is, if A is true, B is true. If A is true, B is true. If A is not true, if A is not true, what about B? Can you say anything about B? Give me the answer. If A is not true, can you say anything about B? Can you say B is not true? Can you say that? Please answer that. If A is not true, can you say B is not true? Please answer this. If A is not true, can you say, whatever it is, Shreshta, please answer this question. If A is not true, can you say B is not true? Can you say that? Can you say that? A implies B is there. Yes, Shreya, you got it right. If A is not true, you can't say that B is not true. All right? Be very clear about this. But I can say one thing. Yes, Ruchita, you got it right. If B is not true, if B is not true, okay, if B is not true, then A is not true. You know that it is called contrapositive. If B is not true, A is not true. That we can say. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, Ashray has said that. Yes. If B is not true, A is not true. It is called the contrapositive that you know. Similarly, if B is true, can you say A is true? Can you say A is true? If B is true, can you say A is true? Please answer that. If B is true, can you say A is true? No, you cannot say that. So, correct. Ruchita has answered it. Shreya has answered it. Both of you have answered it. Very good. So, you understood an implication statement. A implies B means the only thing that you can conclude from it is if A is true, the other thing that you can conclude is the contrapositive and the contrapositive is, if B is not true, A is not true. These are the two things that you can conclude from an implication statement. Okay, so let us rub this off. Okay, let me give an example. If Ram takes an RTC bus, he is late to the class. If Ram takes an RTC bus, he is late to the class. All right. If Ram takes an RTC bus, he is late to the class. He is late to the class today. He is late to the class today. Has he taken the RTC bus? 
Can you answer that? He is late to the class today. Has he taken the RTC bus? Are Ashreya, why maybe or may not be? Can you answer or not? That's all I want to know. Can you answer or not? Yes, sir. Hey, mama. We have, <laughs> after listening to entire Ramayan, you are coming up with this question. A, A implies, yes, Rishita, you got it right. A implies B means there are only two conclusions that you can make. If A is right, B is right. Or if B is not right, A is not right. So let me put my statement in A implies B. Ram, Ram takes Ram takes RTC bus implies he is late. A implies B. All right. So now what is it that you can conclude? Today, all right, today, Friday, Ram has taken RTC bus. So today, Friday, he will be late to the class. That you can definitely say. Now, today, he is late to the class. Let us say, today, he is late to the class. Can you conclude that he has taken the RTC bus? No, you cannot conclude. You cannot conclude. B implies A is not right. Okay? Okay, what can you conclude? He is not late to the class today. He is not late to the class today. What can you conclude? Ram has not taken the RTC bus. That is possible because that is the contrapositive. Ram is not late. Ram is not late. All right. Ram is not late. Implies Ram has not taken the RTC bus. That I can say. That is the contrapositive. So please understand. Yes, have you understood this or not? This implication statement you should understand clearly. Lot of logical deduction questions on this. Implication statement. Is this clear or not? Yes or no? Yes. Ashray has got it. I hope all the others have also got it. If you have not got it, place the video again and try to understand it. Okay? So, when a statement is given, A implies B, the only thing that you can say is, if A is true, B is true, or when B is not true, A is not true. No other conclusion can be supported. Okay? So, now let's go back to our example here. What is our example? Our example is that every member of... So, if he wears a wristband, he wears either red wristband or white wristband. That is all. Now, please answer the question. In the light of what I discussed, please answer the question. Rishita has got it right. Rishita has got it right. Who? Whatever. Shreya has got it right. Fantastic. Shreya has got it right. Okay. What about the rest? Now you answer. Anaga has got it right. Anaga, now did you understand why your earlier answers were not right? Ruchita has understood. Ruchita has got it right. Fantastic. What about the rest? Okay. So let us look at the examples that we have here. A member of the Bombay cricket team who does not wear red wristbands while batting wears white wristbands while batting. I do not know if he does not wear red wristbands, if he does not wear red wristbands, there are two possibilities. There are two possibilities that he may not be wearing wristbands at all. They may not be wearing wristbands at all. So I can't say for sure that he is wearing white wristbands. So if he is not wearing red wristbands, there are two possibilities. Possibility number one, that he is wearing white wristbands. Possibility number two, he is not wearing any wristbands. So I cannot conclude that one is right. Have you understood this or not? If he is not, we only know that if he is wearing a wristband, he can wear either, he should wear either red or white. If he is not wearing, I don't know. All right, if he is not wearing, so if he is not wearing red wristband, I do not know whether he is wearing white wristband or he is not wearing any wristband at all. So, a first one cannot be concluded. Two, 
no member of the bombay cricket team wears blue wristbands while batting that is supported why because if he is wearing a wristband it has to be either red or it has to be white it cannot be blue so definitely i can conclude that two is right two is definitely right what about three some members of the bombay cricket team do not wear wristbands when batting i do not know i do not know the statement only says that if they wear a wristband then it has to be red or white i do not know whether they wear whether they not wear if they wear it has to be red or white i do not know whether they whether they wear or whether they do not wear so this also i cannot say so the only thing that is possible is to i hope you all understood yes or no please answer it have you understood it yes richita you got understood it good what about the others what about shreya reddy what about shreshta yes good what about bagira because this is very very important in logical deductions this kind of thinking you need to develop all right very very important so anyway we are running out of time now if you have not understood this please play the video again in youtube and try to get what i'm trying to say here now let's look at the next one the next one is yes follows this let's try to answer this question it follows the seventh question please answer this question please answer this question the seventh question Ashreya has answered. Ashreya, look at your answer, madam. Look at your answer. Look at your answer. Look at your answer, Shreya. What about the rest? What about the rest? Shreya, look at your answer. Anaga, what is the answer? Yes, Shreya, you got it right. Ruchita, your answer. Where did you get that answer? Okay, we are running out of time. I don't have time to give to everybody. So let's look at this. He says, in addition to the data given in question seven. Question seven. What is the data given? If somebody is wearing a wristband, it is a either a red wrist band or a white wrist band that is what is given in question 7 now in question 8 he says further if any player in the ranji trophy matches who wears red wrist bands while batting also wears a blue batting gloves so he says if you are wearing a red wrist band you also wear a blue batting gloves blue batting gloves so that is the principal but he also says no member of the bombay cricket team wears a blue batting gloves nobody is wearing a blue batting gloves this is an implication statement a implies b kiran bhai just concentrate here kiran bhai concentrate here you got the wrong answer what is the st implication statement here red wristbands if you wear ruchita you got the wrong answer please concentrate on my answer on my explanation now this is an implication statement here red wristbands if you are wearing you will 
wear blue batting gloves. But Bombay cricket team fellows do not wear blue batting gloves. It is of the form A implies B. If B is not true, if B is not true, then what is true? If B is not true, then what is not true? A is not true. If B batting, if blue batting gloves they are not wearing, then they are not wearing red wristbands also. Then they are not wearing red wristbands also. Let us be clear about this. Bombay cricket team fellows, because they are not wearing blue batting gloves, not B, therefore not A. Not A means they are not wearing red wristbands. Okay. So this option is ruled out. So we can restate this statement as if Bombay cricket team people are wearing wristbands, they are wearing only white wristbands because red wristbands is ruled out. So if Bombay cricket team people are wearing wristbands, it is only white wristbands. So what is the answer? The answer therefore is Every member of the Bombay cricket team who wears wristbands wears white wristbands when batting. So this is the answer on the basis of whatever we have discussed. Bhagirath, yes, you've got the answer. Ruchita, now you've got the answer. Anaga, now you've got the answer. Fantastic. You are following what I am trying to say. We have discussed some very important principles today. We have discussed only eight questions, but some very, very important points that we have discussed if you have not still followed 100%, play back the YouTube video and try to understand these questions. We will carry on this discussion in the next class. Also, Anji, I have instructed to pass on this logical deduction material to all of you. So I'm going to take another couple of sessions in logical deduction, uh, not logical deduction, logical reasoning. I'm going to take a couple of more sessions in logical reasoning and we are going to conclude. Next class will be the next alternate day, Monday. So we're going to conclude uh, on that basis. Uh, the rest of the stuff you can try on your own. And uh, I am giving my number. This is the number that I have. Please send me a WhatsApp. Nine double zero triple zero double seven six one. If you have any questions in the material that I've sent for logical deduction, uh, not, not just logical deduction, logical reasoning, if you have any questions on that, uh, I will answer those questions, sir. Okay, so uh, next, uh, uh, next class is on Monday. We will meet in the next class. Till then, have a good day. Okay. Santosh, you can stop the class now.